Hi everyone, so I'm going to take you through some uh, bonding exam questions which are relevant to the AS part of the course. Now this is from an OCR paper and just to begin with, at the start of the question you were given this dot and cross diagram which is for antimony trichloride and you were asked certain questions about this particular dot and cross diagram and the actual molecule itself and the first of these questions was to uh, name the 3D shape and then explain why that 3D shape occurs. Now, first off then, let's have a look at how we name and draw a 3D shape from a dot and cross like this. Now, what we're primarily focusing our attention on is the antimony in the middle. And what we need to draw our attention to is the fact it's got one, two, three bond pairs, and also what we've got here is just one lone pair. So in total, we've got four electron pairs. But there's actually a mark in this description that you may not notice. Explaining why it has a 3D shape is first achieved by representing that you know that these are bond pairs and lone pairs as part of your answer. So you actually get one mark very early on for saying that it's got three bond pairs and for also saying that it has one lone pair. The next mark you get is for saying that the electron pairs repel, and I can't stress this enough, you can't just say electrons repel, you have to say electron pairs repel each other. So make sure you do mention that. The final mark is for naming the shape, and the shape for this one, you'd have the antimony in the middle like so, you'd have your lone pair at the top, you'd have these three bonds around the outside like so, with a chlorine, at the end of each one of them. And so this shape, to get you this final mark, is going to be pyramidal. There's no actual marks for drawing it, but I do want to have that diagram there. So then we can use it to explain the next part of this question. Okay, so for the next part of this, you were then asked to explain, explain why molecules of this SBCL3, explain why they are polar. So the first mark in this next bit was for pointing out that the bonds within this structure have a dipole. So, for instance, in this particular molecule, you'd see that the antimony is going to be delta plus and that the chlorines are going to be delta minus. You can normally assume that a halogen, if it's one of the two atoms in the bond, is going to be the one that's going to be delta minus. That's a good rule of thumb. Obviously, if you've got two halogens bonded together, that rule's going to fall apart. But then the higher up the group, the more electronegative there are. So it's more likely that something like fluorine or chlorine would be delta minus. Now, this particular bond here, of course, is polar, and that gets you your first mark. The next mark for this was then for saying that the molecule is not symmetrical. Now it looks symmetrical because it looks like a nice pyramid, but in terms of the actual spread of the delta minuses, it's not symmetrical. And you have to include this as part of the answer because then the final mark teamed with that was for saying that the dipoles do not cancel. What I've just brought up there is the actual mark scheme for this particular section of the question um, and what you can see is, just to draw your attention to it, you do need to point out about the symmetry of the molecule and how the dipoles do not cancel because it is an explain question, it does actually say explain this and you'll also notice here that we've said that the molecules have a dipole, that's the same thing as saying that there's a difference in electronegativities and what you'll notice as well is that there is a reference to a diagram. So if you do draw a diagram as part of your answer, of course that can get you the marks, and that's something to bear in mind about most of the bonding questions in chemistry. Moving on, we're going to move to this question. These are all taken, by the way, from the F321 2014 paper, so you can have a look for that online or as part of your red past paper pack if you're at Ashton Sixth Form College with me. So what we're looking at here is a describe and explain question, which is why I'm chucking this one in. So we've got describe and explain the electrical conductivity of sodium oxide and sodium. So we've got two completely different uh, lattice structures here. They're both giant, um, but one of them is ionic and the other is metallic. Metallic. In your answer, you should use appropriate technical terms spelt correctly. Now, what you're going to have in more recent styles of papers is instead of a pencil there, you're going to have just a little asterisk shown next to the question. And what that means is you've got a leveled response question there. And if you look these up on OCR um, online, it does explain it really, really well that you need to give a really detailed, well-versed answer using lots of scientific terms to get a top level response. And the higher the level, the more marks you get. And we'll go through these in lesson, of course, as well. Now for this particular question then, I can tell you as well, um, I've cut off the marks for this, but it was 
five marks, and you've got two of those marks are talking about the sodium, and three of them were talking about the sodium oxide. What I'd actually recommend you do is split up your answer into two clear sections. So at first we're going to talk about the sodium, and then we're going to talk about the sodium oxide. So about the sodium, talking about the electrical conductivity, we need to say that it conducts electricity both when solid and, of course, when it's molten. Because it does do both. And the reason is it's got the delocalized electrons. And the delocalized electrons allow it to conduct the electricity. Now, moving on to the Na2O, just over here, so I'll do that in the blue. We need to say that it will not conduct electricity in the solid state, but it will conduct electricity in the molten. So what we need to say first is that it will, when molten, you can say liquid for this, just please make sure you don't say aqueous because that's a different thing entirely. So it will when it's molten and it won't when it's solid. So why will it do either or? Well, first off, it will when it's molten because you've got free moving and most importantly, key term, mobile ions when it's molten and they allow uh, to carry a charge. And what you've also got to mention here is the reason that it won't when it's solid is because the ions are in fixed positions. So they're in fixed positions, so nothing is free moving and mobile at all. Now, I've given you six ticks here, obviously, for the five, so let's have a look at the exact number of marks for this one then. Okay, so here we go. There's the mark scheme. Now, you can see here we've got all the points we mentioned, but also one of the points that we mentioned right at the very start is actually an essential part of one of the answers. So we said that we've obviously got two giant structures, one is ionic and one is metallic, but you'll notice right at the bottom here, there is actually a mark teamed with the fact that the ions are in the fixed positions for mentioning that it's a giant ionic lattice. So I suppose it is important to always make sure that you state what kind of structure you've got. They were both giants, so that obviously wasn't gonna be a differentiating factor, but of course, knowing that the Na2O is ionic, um, is incredibly important here because it's tied to that last one. But you can see all the other comments are here saying that the sodium conducts in the solid and molten. We got that. Talking about the sodium having delocalized electrons. Yep. The Na2O conducts when molten, not when solid. Yep. We said that was two down here, but um, obviously we're just making facts. We weren't actually looking at the mark scheme just then. And here, molten Na2O has ions which are mobile. Fantastic. And down here, the ions are in fixed positions, teamed with our little introduction perhaps to the question which we did intro this with. All right, so I hope that clears up some of the bonding questions with you for AS, and I'll leave you to the rest of your work. Happy revising.